Hi, um, well, I'm going to start this vlog by talking about the three performances that I have recorded. So I started with opera, then I did uh, R&B, and I finished with jazz. Well, for I, I know that it's always difficult for us to like evaluate ourselves uh, because we're always very like strict, like, oh, I did everything wrong, there's nothing good. But I do understand that um, I am going to look at it, try to look at it in the most like outside position possible. So I like kind of forget that it's me. Um, well, with opera singing, I was singing La Shakyopianga. And we all always know that to sing any kind of genre, we need to breathe. Breathing is one of the most important, important things um, in the vocal technique. But with opera singing, we need 10 times more breathing than usually. And because I haven't been practicing um, that genre, I felt like it was a little bit difficult for me when I was finishing the sentences because we put, we need to put vibrato, we need to give like power in the, in the vocals, but at the same time, we're resonating them. We're, we have the soft palate um, lifted. So we have to think about so many things at the same time that I am, no longer used to so I kind of like I had a little bit of a hard time uh, doing the opera video it's not like the technique is lost I still know how I should do it but I feel like um, I just needed to practice I mean like opera singing is one of the most difficult genres I from in my opinion of course uh, so I do feel that I should have like worked more on my breathing because sometimes I would struggle at the end of the sentence um, the resonators is always a tricky one because we are always like thinking about like which resonator I'm going to use, the nasal, the pharyngeal, the oral cavities, am I going to sing to the mask or not? Because like in opera singing is all about like we're just like positioning the voice in a different place. With R and B, for example, I'm I'm putting everything to the front. Not everything, obviously, but I'm I'm like using my chest voice. I obviously I, I I'll, I'll use neutrals. I'll use some techniques that I'm also using in opera, but it's not like with the oh, it's like ah. so it's it's different. Um, in the R and B song, I feel like I mean I'm, it's sexual healing. I I don't know why, but when I'm singing opera. I kind of like, I was always looking away, I had this like really like, not professional, but I had this like really like serene posture and I, I closed my eyes a little bit, but I was like, because I immediately feel like I'm being like, I'm acting and I'm, I have this character and I need to act. So I kind of like, is it more easier for me, like the, the posture that I have? When I'm singing sexual healing, for example, I'm always closing my eyes because I feel like it is me, so I'm vulnerable. I don't know, it's a little bit difficult to explain. Obviously, it might have to do with the fact that when we're singing opera, it's not as relatable with ourselves as, for example, sexual healing. Um, because I'm talking about so much more like obviously with Oprah the one that I'm saying is also very vulnerable because I'm saying like let me cry and because I'm vulnerable because my lucky I don't have any luck my luck is bad um, and then like I finally find liberty so at the same time it's very like it is vulnerable what I'm saying but maybe because it's in Italian, maybe because the way I'm saying it is not that relatable to me. But I do know what I'm saying, so I kind of give the emotion of it. Um, with sexual healing, I just felt like maybe um, because it was the day after my concert and I had already sang that song before and my voice wasn't like in the best like state. Um, I feel like we're always alternating. We can't just like give everything. And we need obviously like to create the story that we're saying. We need to engage the audience. We need to, to create sentences. We need to take the audience somewhere and then like go back. We need the dynamics as we, I, as we also uh, need them in opera. 
And I do feel like I can do it so much better when I'm singing opera than when I'm singing, for example, sexual healing. It might have to do with the fact that when I sang opera, I used to sing opera, I always had like the music sheet with all the notations, with all the, um, the composer's um, like desire for the song, with piano, with forte, with everything, with crescendo, the crescendo. So I would always know what I had to do. Um, with... So I do feel like I should have worked better on the um, dynamics to create more like breathing sounds, to create more neutral, woo, instead of like just having power because sometimes it's still difficult for me when I am starting to use my chest voice because it was something that I wasn't used to doing. So when I'm doing, my, when I'm using my chest voice, sometimes it's difficult for me like to leave the chest voice and then go back again so i either like stay on the chest voice or i don't stay on the chest voice so i still need to work on the mixed voice i still need to work on the changes from one to the other i need maybe like to sing looking in the mirror to know what i'm doing um to 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 interact in a better way to feel the song um we jazz, I mean, like, jazz is also, like, a familiar uh, genre for me. Um, because when I started singing opera, then I started singing jazz. So I've been singing jazz for way longer than R&B. Um, lots of the techniques that I use in opera, obviously not with the intensity and power that I I need to, to use for jazz, but lots of the techniques I have developed. So it's quite easy for me to do it. Nevertheless, I do feel like I need to be careful uh, because sometimes I forget about like the swinging feel, the rhythmic displacement that we need to have in, in jazz. Obviously, like the, the song that I chose was like a, a calm one, so we, we weren't feeling so much the, um, the syncopations, the swinging rhythms, and I didn't have the chance because it was only 30 seconds. I didn't have the chance to uh, improvise. But if I would have the chance, I would have to do some sketch singing. I would have to work around the, 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 the lines that I were singing and they had to be within the key of the music and within the length of um, the chorus or verse. So. I needed to know all I needed to know all of those things and I do but I didn't have the time to show them um, so uh, moving on I, I feel like um, I decided to choose for it for for the um, the b7 and m4 I decided to choose an artist that was a little bit not like me <laughs> I wish but um, her name is Caitlin or Aurelia Smith. Basically, she's a classically trained uh, guitarist and pianist. She went to Berkeley and she studied composition and sound engineering. Then she went back home and she discovered uh, the Buckla um, Music Easel, which is basically a synthesizer. She started to work around it. She started to learn by herself. She also like explored it like with other people and she got really excited about it. Um, her main instrument when she started with, like, after she, she left Berkeley was voice. So everything that she's doing now, like she just, she released an album called Years and that album, she puts her voice. And for example, that that's one of the first albums where she's putting other instruments because before it was like mostly like synthesizers. And so she puts her voice and she puts out, um, woodwind quintet and what she does is that um she uses pre-recorded samples as well as real-time um processed uh vocals when she's like playing live or even in her in her her, her songs and then with with the synthesizers she has 22 different samples and she launches from the innovate the innovation launch pad and so the vocal tracks that she has, she then like pitch shifts um, the voice in real time. Basically, the all the the samples are running in parallel, 
and they are in lock to a key. So she's always changing the, the samples that she has and the, vo the, the, the vocal samples, of course, and the other samples that she has. And she creates sound. She's inspired by nature. She's inspired by so many things. And I mean, she can go from like doing a song like yoga uh, related, more or less. But at the same time, she can do something like that we can listen in a club and we don't feel like Zen. Um, so it's really interesting to see her working with a synthesizer because it's just like so many wires and buttons and things to, to, to click on and stuff. And then like the way she starts doing it is just amazing. Uh, the way she works with her vocal part as well is really interesting. And I just felt it was like very different than what I was used to. So I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, in terms of um, uh, an artist that in a way I kind of like felt that was important socially and influentially speaking um, is Beyonce, which is going like from one point to the other. But basically, um, I just, I feel like Beyonce has become one of those artists that whatever she does, it's it's not a rule or it's not a fact, but I mean, I just feel like she has created this empire and she has maintained and establish a position in society that uh, in a way is more important than sometimes like politicians and even the president of the United States pretty much and so I do feel that she I mean she maintains her personal life very like private so if we look at her Instagram page we I mean we don't we don't see like her everyday picture like or her insta stories they're not very like personal related but she for example i know that she uses she dresses with lots of um designers important designers sometimes like african designers so it's very important that she is like supporting her um her origins and showing like empowering her origins in the same way um for me I, I just feel like one of the most um not inspiring but like the one that i remember the most probably was 2014 uh vmas uh her performance she basically did um a 15 minute medley where she played like sang like lots of songs and she did a rendition of the female anthem, uh, Flawless. But basically, she had, um, she had um, sentences and she had the, the speech of um, the poet Shima Mandan Gozi Adikie's essay. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correct. That um, is called We Should All Be Feminists. So she had... Um, she had it like plastered on the screen and we even like listened to her speaking um, in the beginning of the song. And for me, for example, um, it was very interesting because in the end, she ends up like the stadium went dark and um, not the stadium, the, yeah, the venue, yeah, went dark and basically she finishes with just a sentence feminist in her back and everything is dark and she's just like next to the sentence to the word yeah um which is like something like it can be more obvious than this so for example for me i i, I study gender studies but i didn't know about this um essay so when when i started to to listen to the song i really like the song but I was like, who's speaking in the beginning? Who's like... And then I, 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 I searched for it. And in a way, I kind of like got in touch with someone and with a personality that um, is very important. And in this context, um, 
so it was it was very good because like i believe that the same way lots of other girls probably they did the same they started to wonder like oh my god like look at the power that she has i want to be like her um they listen to to beyonce's song and they feel empowered um i mean and it's it's such a really nice feeling that not just for the artist but at the same time for the audience i mean we 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 are giving the empowerment to others and as an audience we are feeling empowered by the artists by the music and nowadays i just feel like music has this power i mean with all this technology is like music is everywhere we can listen to anything we want in the second that we want to do it um as artists we have the availability to spread our music to spread our message in such an easier way than it used to be um it's so much easier for us in a way to produce music to create stuff so everything seems to be like simplified and easier but in a way we also have to think that this only happens to those who have access to it so unfortunately this is still uh it's not reachable for uh so many people but i am lucky to be able to live in a city like london and to have had the opportunity of going to university and to study and so i do i do feel like it is very important um that when we're creating something when we're doing art that we also always feel um that it it, ha it, it is with a purpose in a way um it's not like we're a factory and we just do music just because so that is my i mean that is my like final objective is to be able to reach a point where i already have the skills and the knowledge to start creating things just because just because i want to show what i feel i want to help others i want to I want to share my emotions, I want to share my my experiences and I want to empower other girls and boys to do the same, to feel better about themselves and to listen to my music and feel what I feel when I'm doing that music. So, I mean, it, it's just like, I hope I don't need to say anything when I reach that point and my music, my songs my pieces because I still don't know what I'm going to do will transmit what I feel and what I think.